the rapture and the second coming of Christ are frequently confused, leading to significant misunderstandings in interpreting biblical prophecy. It's crucial for anyone studying end times prophecy to clearly differentiate between these two events, as they represent distinct moments in Christian eschatology. The rapture marks the moment when Jesus Christ returns to remove the church, comprising all believers in him, from the earth. This event is vividly described in 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 13 to 18 and 1 Corinthians 15 verses 50 to 54. During the rapture, believers who have died will be resurrected first, and then, together with believers who are still alive, will meet the Lord in the air. This extraordinary event will happen instantaneously, in the blink of an eye, transforming believers and taking them to be with Christ. In contrast, the second coming of Christ involves his return to defeat the Antichrist, destroy evil, and establish his millennial kingdom. This monumental event is detailed in Revelation 19 verses 11 to 16. Subscribe, share, and like for the word of God to grow and prevail. The important differences between the rapture and the second coming are as follows. 1. Location of meeting. At the rapture, believers meet the Lord in the air, as described in 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 17. In contrast, at the second coming, believers return with the Lord to the earth, according to Revelation 19 verse 14. 2. Timing relative to tribulation. The second coming occurs after the great and terrible tribulation, detailed in Revelation chapters 6 to 19. The rapture, however, takes place before the tribulation, as indicated in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 9 and Revelation 3 verse 10. 3. Nature of the event. The rapture involves the removal of believers from the earth as an act of deliverance, as described in 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 13 to 17 and 5 verse 9. Conversely, the second coming includes the removal of unbelievers as an act of judgment, as stated in Matthew 24 verses 40 to 41. 4. Visibility. The rapture will be secret and instantaneous, as explained in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 50 to 54. In contrast, the second coming will be a visible event witnessed by all, as mentioned in Revelation 1 verse 7 and Matthew 24 verses 29 to 30. 5. Sequence of events. The second coming of Christ will not occur until after certain end times events take place, such as those described in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 4, Matthew 24 verses 15 to 30, and Revelation chapters 6 to 18. On the other hand, the rapture is imminent and could occur at any moment, as emphasized in Titus 2 verses 13 and 1 Thessalonians 4 13 verse 18, and 1 Corinthians 15 verses 50 to 54. Understanding the distinction between the rapture and the second coming of Christ is crucial for several reasons. 1. Tribulation. If the rapture and the second coming are considered the same event, it implies that believers will have to endure the tribulation. However, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 9 and Revelation 3 verse 10 indicate that believers are not appointed to suffer wrath and will be kept from the hour of trial that is coming upon the whole world. 2. Imminence. If the rapture and the second coming are the same, the return of Christ cannot be imminent because numerous events must occur first, as described in Matthew 24 verses 4 to 30. Recognizing the rapture as a separate event underscores its imminence, allowing for the possibility that it could happen at any moment. 3. Focus during tribulation. Revelation chapters 6 to 19, which detail the tribulation period, do not mention the church. This period, referred to as the time of trouble for Jacob in Jeremiah 30 verse 7, signifies a time when God's primary focus will shift back to Israel, as elaborated in Romans 11 verses 17 to 31. 4. For encouragement and comfort. The doctrine of the rapture provides comfort and hope to believers, knowing they will be spared from the coming wrath, 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 18. It offers a sense of urgency to live godly lives in anticipation of Christ's imminent return. Titus 2 verse 13. 5. Evangelistic Implications Understanding the rapture and the second coming can enhance evangelistic efforts. Teaching that Christ's return is imminent can motivate unbelievers to consider their spiritual state and seek salvation before it's too late. 6. Distinct Purposes the rapture and the second coming serve different divine purposes. The rapture is an act of deliverance, 
taking the church out of the world before God's judgment. While the second coming is an act of judgment and restoration, where Christ returns to defeat evil and establish his millennial kingdom. 7. Different outcomes, the rapture results in believers being taken to heaven, while the second coming results in Jesus establishing his kingdom on earth. This distinction highlights the different outcomes and purposes of each event. 8. A scriptural interpretation. Recognizing the differences can aid in the correct interpretation of various Bible passages. Understanding whether a passage refers to the rapture or the second coming can provide clarity and prevent misinterpretation. 9. A spiritual preparedness. Knowing that the rapture is imminent encourages believers to live in a state of readiness and spiritual vigilance. It emphasizes the importance of maintaining a close relationship with Christ and living according to his teachings. 10. Or the role of Israel, the second coming, particularly during the tribulation period, marks a time when God's focus will return to Israel. This is significant for understanding the broader scope of God's redemptive plan for humanity, including his covenant with Israel. 11. Hope and Motivation the doctrine of the rapture offers hope and motivation for believers to persevere through trials and tribulations, knowing that their ultimate deliverance is assured. As you wait for another powerful video, distinguishing between the rapture and the second coming helps clarify the timeline of end times events, affirms the promise of deliverance for believers, and emphasizes the imminent return of Christ. God bless you.